folks, Scott here with the new My Monthly Hero February 2024 Classic and Premium Kits. This month we are treated to jam-packed kits exploring friendship, understanding, kindness, and peace. Our Classic Kit includes a 6 by 8 inch clear stamp set with 17 coordinating dies, 4 tag fancy dies, 6 sheets of premium white cardstock, that's 5.5 by 8.5, and a unicorn pigment ink cube, and three yards of rustic twine. Now, the premium kit includes everything in the classic kit and a three by four inch clear stamp set, imagine and peace fancy dies, those two sentiment dies, a sun stencil at six by six inches, and an ephemera pack of 48 pieces of ephemera. And last but not least, some white embossing powder, half an ounce of white embossing powder. Now, for some reason, and this has never happened before, but I did not receive the six sentiment dies or the four tag fancy dies. When I asked after them at Hero Arts, I was told that these dies were missing from the other artists as well, and they would try to get them to me when available. Well, this was before the kits started shipping, so I'm not quite sure what was going on. I waited a day or two and then just decided to forge ahead without those dies. Now, as usual, I will make my first five cards using only the supplies from the classic kit, minus those 10 dies. <laughs> we have all white card bases here, a little black square card. Let's dig right in. Now, since I couldn't die cut the large sentiments in that stamp set, I realized I had to create room for the sentiments on my backgrounds. So I cut a variety of uh, masking strips to use on my backgrounds to clear space for those large sentiments in our stamp set. So for our first card, we have a sending thanks card. I took a one and a quarter inch strip of that masking and attached it to the bottom third of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel of white cardstock. I thought I'd play around with my new Ohuhu alcohol markers and I made a stripy ombre above and below the masking. I removed the masking, stamped the sentiment with VersaFine ink and embossed that with some clear embossing powder. I die cut the panel with a Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle die. I glued that to a matte colored with the same dark blue alcohol marker. So I was sure that would match. I stamped the Peace Lily and the vase with Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and I colored them with my alcohol markers. I die cut the plant and vase, and I grabbed an A2 white card base. I glued the matte in the background to the card base, glued the plant onto the vase, and attached them to the card front with foam tape. I did do a few colorless blender spots on the background, along with some hand-drawn splatter. Those add a little bit more interest to the background. And lastly, some Hero Arts C dot embellishments highlight that sentiment there. A pretty thank you card is always useful to have on hand. Sending thanks. So there are 14 small sentiments in this stamp set. Peace, hope, healing, kindness, wonder, love, tranquility, etc., etc. I knew I'd never get to all of them in 10 cards, so I figured I'd use all of them in one fell swoop. For our second card, we have Imagine with tranquility, peace, kindness, happiness, healing, hope, humanity, empathy, wonder, all along the left side here. I laid out all the small sentiments on my Misty, and I stamped them on the left side of an A2 panel of white cardstock using the Hero Arts Unicorn White Ink Cube, and I embossed them with white embossing powder. Yes, we do get white embossing powder with the premium kit, but I, of course, have my own embossing powder, and it's white. <laughs> the embossing gave me some good ink resist, so I ink blended some Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide ink over the sentiments fading out towards the center. Now, I thought the wheat stalks would be more interesting if they were longer, so I stamped them on the top half of the right side with Memento ink, masking off their bottoms. Their bottoms are right around there. And then I used a Pigma Micron pen and a ruler to extend their stems to the bottom half of the card. 
the Imagine sentiment, I stamped right over the extension spot on the stocks. So that helps camouflage where the stamp ends and the pen begins. <laughs> the sentiment, of course, stamped with VersaFine and embossed with some clear embossing powder. The panel is cut with the same Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle die matted to a black mat, glued to a white card base. I did color the wheat with my alcohol markers and I added a knot of twine where the stalks crossed each other. I like this. I think that's very striking. Imagine kindness and tranquility and humanity. There's one for you. <laughs> now we have a couple of small butterfly stamps in our stamp set. You know, I try to use all the stamps in a stamp set and nothing says tranquility to me quite as much as a butterfly. So we have Envision Tranquility with more peace lilies and those two little butterflies. I thought they were right at home amongst the plants here. I stamped the images on a panel of white cardstock using Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and I colored them all with my alcohol markers. I'm slowly getting a feel for these new Ahuhu markers, but I have a long way to go with my learning curve. We're working on it. I stamped the sentiment with VersaFine ink and embossed it with clear embossing powder. I spattered the panel with some Hero Arts Splash and Green Apple Reactive inks, and I die cut that with a Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle die. I glued the die cut panel to a black mat and down to a white card base. A few touches of white gel pen add some detail to the butterflies. This is my tribute to a little more tranquility in all of our lives. Notice so far, I have not been able to cut out our large sentiments. <laughs> so I was looking for more background choices that just happened to leave room for a stamped sentiment. When I came across some older foiling plates I had picked up on sale, this is an add a stripe of color foiling plate. That's an old uh, glimmer of the month from uh, Spellbinders. Just make simple stripes, a thin one, a thicker one, a thin one, a thicker one, and leaves the spaces open. And that gave us this card. Look at that foiling. Believe in peace. I love that foiling. <laughs> now, I don't have a lot of foil plates, but this one, this filled my needs just perfectly. You can see this is the thick part thin line, thicker line, thick line, thin line. And the foil here is uh, Speckled Aura Glimmer Foil. Really nice holographic gold there. Mm -hmm, love it. <laughs> I foiled that on an angle on a panel of white cardstock, and I was stamping the sentiments in the spaces when I misstamped and thought I ruined it all. <laughs> but no, I simply trimmed away all of the crappy stamping. Here you go. There you go. See, I double stamped that. This moved when I was stamping it. I just trimmed away the crappy stamping from the well-foiled portions, and I re-stamped the images in the same place on an A2 card base, and then I glued the trimmed foiling pieces back in place. Voila. No mistake is, is too large to overcome. <laughs> I stamped the wheat stalks and the mason jar in memento ink together on a scrap of white cardstock. I colored them with alcohol markers and I die cut them together using the top half of the wheat die with the bottom half of the mason jar die and then just completed the cut with a craft knife. This is all one piece. I love that. I wrapped some of the rustic twine around the mouth of the jar, and I finished it up with a small bow. I attached that assemblage to the card front with foam tape. A few gold embellishments add even more sparkle and dimension. I love the juxtaposition of the fancy sparkly foiling with the humble twine and simple mason jar. <laughs> I think that's really nice. Believe in peace, and there you go. I used two of those big sentiments on one card. Believe in peace. I believe in it. It's a little hard to attain sometimes, but <laughs> I believe in it. So that's five of the large sentiments in our stamp set. One more to go. Choose. 
Now we do have kindness in our small words here, choose kindness. But I was thinking of something a little more graphic. And then I remember an old stamp set that just might work. This is a November of 2017 Simon Says Stamp Kit stamp set with kindness right here. That's what I was looking for. I'm glad that popped into my mind because then that gave us our little square black card. Choose kindness. Our black card has a lot of color. <laughs> so I stamped both the sentiments on a piece of Hero Arts pitch black cardstock using Hero Arts unicorn white ink and embossed that with the white embossing powder. I grabbed my Yasutomo pearlescent watercolors and painted the letters in all different colors. These inexpensive watercolors work terrifically on black cardstock. Remember, this isn't even watercolor paper, and they're available all over the place. I'll have links to some of these odd art supplies over on my blog at cardcutups.com. Since the sentiments together suggested a square, I decided to do a square card for this. I die cut the painted panel with a Tonic Studio scalp square layering die, and I die cut a piece of the Tim Holtz metallic cardstock in purple with the next larger scalloped die. I glued those two together and down to a four and a quarter inch square pitch black card base. It's great finding a new stamp that works so well with an old stamp. And now I've used all of the sentiment stamps. Dies be damned. There you can see some nice pearlescent on those watercolors. Bright, beautiful, colorful card. I love this. Choose kindness. I try. <laughs> Always. <laughs> now we get to bring all the premium elements into play here. Phew. Now, I have to admit, I'm not a huge fan of ephemera. Ultimately, I'd rather color my images myself. But I took stock of all the pieces we got in this kit, and the flowers sparked a remembrance of a see-through card that Jennifer McGuire created on one of her live videos just a few weeks ago. And I'll link to that over on my blog as well. That's what inspired this card. So for card number six, we have a peace card with a see-through front. So this ephemera is one of each flower, both orange feathers, one peacock feather, and half of a cloud up here in the center. <laughs> I arranged all the ephemera together and I glued them to each other before cutting them down to four and a quarter inches wide by five and three quarter inches tall. I left an extra quarter of an inch to score and fold over to attach the see-through card front to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch back piece. Now, I thought the piece die cut seemed to be the exact same size as the piece ephemera piece. So I die cut the word piece from the ephemera piece. And sure enough, it's exactly the same size. So I die cut two more blanks from heavy white cardstock. I glued them behind the die cut piece. And then I glued the stacked sentiments down to the second piece ephemera. Really interesting dimension on that sentiment here. I added some Spectrum Noir sparkle pen to the sentiment and I mounted that to the front with foam tape doubling up on that dimension. I love how that decoration on the sentiment is on the background and yet the sentiment pops up over the top of that. I thought that was great fun. I loved the sentiment dies for matching <laughs> the ephemera perfectly. <laughs> I did cut another top folding card base to four inches by five and a quarter to glue on the inside of the card so you'd only have white showing through the see-through card front. I love this idea for using ephemera pieces, especially flowers or any ephemera that's similarly themed would work for a see-through card front like this piece bright and colorful i am looking forward to some spring so i think my favorite item in this kit is the sun stencil just absolutely terrific stencil so for my next card we've got 
Another foiling card. <laughs> Let your light shine with all that sparkly foiling on it. I turned to my trusty Deco Foil Transfer Gel and spread that through the stencil on a panel of pitch black cardstock. I let that dry thoroughly and then I ran it through my laminator with Gina K's Gold Sequins Fancy Foil. Really nice. I love that. Look at all those colors. So, not wanting to risk the practically perfect foiling, <laughs> I stamped the sentiment on a scrap of pitch black cardstock with Versamark ink and embossed it with gold embossing powder. I die cut the sentiment with a Hero Art Circle Infinity die. I glued it to the center of the foiled panel. I trimmed the panel down to four inches by five and a quarter inches, and I glued that to a white card base. And there we have two foiling techniques that I've used on this kit so far. We've got hot foiling here and deco foil here. I really like the transfer gel and the deco foil. It adds really a nice touch of texture that you really don't get with the hot foil system, but I think they're both beautiful. I love this foil and this card outshines all the rest. Literally. <laughs> there are so many things you can do with that stencil. This next card kind of combines techniques from the last two cards for something truly unique. And we have Imagine. Look at that. That almost looks tie-dyed. <laughs> so to begin with, I ink smooshed some Hero Arts Taffy, Creamsicle, Lemon Drop, and Green Apple Reactive inks on a white card panel. I smoosh the ink down on my craft mat, spray that with water, pick up the inks with your card panel, dry it completely, reapply a couple of times for more depth and variety. When I was happy with the inking, I set the panel aside to dry completely. Now, I really like the ephemera die cut sentiment from the see-through card. I figured that the Imagine die must do the same thing with the Imagine Ephemera piece. <laughs> so I decided this time to cut the word from the ink smushed background. So right in the middle of my background page, I die cut the Imagine. Then I die cut three more Imagine pieces from pitch black cardstock. I glued the black die cuts to the Ephemera piece. We get two in each. So I glued the black die cuts right on top of the first ephemera piece and stack them up, all three of them, and then I glued the ink smooshed Imagine to the top. Finally, I embossed the sentiment with some Versamark ink and clear embossing powder. So that Imagine has a little sparkle, a little shine of its own as well. Then I took the stencil and some Versamark ink and I inked through the stencil with that embossing ink right over the background. I use a blending foam and press through the stencil instead of trying to use a brush. I emboss that with some yellow prism embossing powder. This is from the My Monthly Hero December 2020 kit. <laughs> There's lots of sparkle in that embossing powder. I just love that. I cut the background to four inches by five and a half inches, glued that to a white A2 card base, then it was a simple matter to glue the sentiment over the center of the background, covering up the hole left from the original die cut. I really enjoy those dimensional sentiments and all the bright color and sparkle on the card. And here the stencil doesn't steal the show. It just adds another layer to a really colorful background. Imagine. <laughs> of course, you can use that stencil for just plain old ink blending as well. And we've got You Make My World Brighter with even more sparkle and shine, but with just a plain ink blended stencil. So on a panel of Hero Hues Canary cardstock, I ink blended the Hero Arts Lemon Drop, Creamsicle, and Fruit Punch Reactive inks in a landscape orientation with the center a little above the center of the cardstock. I stamped the sentiment on the center with VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I embossed that with clear embossing powder, so that has some good shine to it as well. 
I colored in the doodads on the sentiment with my Tombow watercolor markers. I trimmed the panel to four inches by five and a quarter. I glued that to a thin black mat and then glued that to a card front of the same canary cardstock. All three layers are then glued to a white card base. Then I sprinkled a bunch of colorful confetti sequins. I think these came in a December 2017 Simon Says stamp kit. Look at all those. I was separating the red, orange, and yellow sequins from the mix, and I just kept adding and adding until I ran out of those colors. I love that generous sprinkle of sparkle all over the front of this card. Though it is a little plain with just the stencil and the stamp, the sequins make this whole card come to life. Lots of sparkle there. You make my world brighter. <laughs> so I was trying to figure out a way to use some of these banner sentiments from our ephemera kit. Not really great sentiments on there. There's a give peace a chance, which I like. And there was also the, I like, uh, of course, make art, not war. There was also uh, this one, try to love one another. Well, I took that and I condensed that down to love one another. <laughs> More a declarative than a, this is a little wishy-washy. Try to love one another. This is a little bit more <laughs> definitive. Love one another, period. <laughs> Ultimately, I came across the banner sentiment that says, plant the seeds of peace. That inspired this card. And for card 10, we have plant the seeds of peace the little pull tab and we pull and our flower grows plant the seeds of peace oh it's been a while since i did a double slider card or a magic slider card this is a perfect way to illustrate this sentiment. <laughs> I do have a video here uh, detailing the steps on how to make a double slider or a magic slider card. I'll post that. I'll post that right up there right now if you'd like detailed instructions. The background here is Hero Hughes Arctic cardstock ink blended along the edges with splash reactive ink. I combined two of the flower ephemera pieces cutting away the white border on the smaller flower and matching it up to the center of the large flower. The leaves, believe it or not, are cut from one of the butterfly ephemera pieces. There's all that's left of my one butterfly that I used for the leaves. I thought that worked just brilliantly. Thank heavens those butterflies were green. <laughs> Plant the seeds of peace. I've never before, I've never before had a stem on a double slider card that actually camouflages the slit in the mechanism on the front of the card. I love this so very much. It really camouflages that slit. This almost looks like magic. Plant the seeds of peace. <laughs> And that wraps up my 10 cards for my monthly hero kits of February 2024. Even missing a number of dies, I was able to come up with a fun assortment of very springy cards this month. I tell you, I am looking forward to spring. So I used all of the white cardstock in the kit, and I managed to use almost all of the stamps in the classic stamp set. I missed one vase and the three different bows. Why stamp a bow when you can tie a bow? <laughs> I use the two large stamps from the premium stamp set. I actually used 16 pieces of ephemera. Wow, that impressed me. <laughs> I used the stencil in three different ways. I used both of the fancy dies in the premium kit as well as some twine, the unicorn white ink and the white embossing powder. I do believe that this stencil will come in very handy for many years to come. And the matching circular sentiments are a great companion to this stencil as well. I enjoyed this much more than I thought I would. These kits are still available on the Hero Arts website. 
If you see something you like here or you want to grab that amazing sun stencil for yourself, please use my links when you go shopping at Hero Arts. It helps support this page and my blog keeps the fun coming your way. <laughs> Thank you so very much for sharing your time with me here. Your support humbles me and keeps me inspired. Please take the time to click the like button on the bottom of this post. Share this post to your Facebook and Pinterest pages. Send me a comment if you have any questions or just want to say hi or would like to let me know which cards are your favorite. I'm truly grateful for your continued attention and assistance. I'm sending you and yours love and light and wishes for an early spring. <laughs> Remember, don't run with scissors. <laughs> and as always, I wish you happy crafting. For more detailed information, better picks, and product links, please visit my website at cardcutups.com.